Hello everyone and welcome back to the Retro Recall. I hope you're doing awesome. Today we're going to be installing IBM's OS2 on the IBM ThinkPad. How fitting. Version 2.1 to be exact. Now, I if you've seen my post in the community YouTube uh, area, I had already tried doing this. I, I did almost 10 hours worth of footage on and off doing different uh, had different challenges trying to install this operating system. And I was using the AOPEN Mystery PC, the Pentium 133 that we had uh, repaired in previous videos. If you haven't checked it out, please do. Same thing with the overview of this specific uh, ThinkPad, the 755C. Now, I have, um, we're going to do a kind of a cut scene type footage because I am going to steal some footage from that video to, to kind of do the overview of the contents of the box. And then we're going to jump to installing the uh, the operating system on this laptop. I'm doing that just because I had done a lot of work on before, almost 10 hours worth of back and forth trying different hardware, different um, different methods. There was nothing I could do to uh, get it going. I just, I don't give up often and that was one of the ones I just walked away from. I just couldn't get it going on that system. Then I thought, after we did this video on this ThinkPad, I thought, well, this is a 486 machine, a little closer to the um, era. And I thought, well, it's an IBM machine, smaller hardware, uh, let's just try it. And this system needs an operating system. So let's get right to it. This is OS2 version 2.1, and it's new. <laughs> Operate at a higher level. Uh, this is IBM's version of, well, I guess competing of Windows, uh, where uh, there was that war at the time uh, with uh, Microsoft and IBM, the long history uh, of uh, OSs that were coming out. And that's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to talk about the history. I'm not here to talk about... Uh, the rival, and that's been done already in several other videos, as I'm sure this has been, but I really wanted to take the time to uh, to take this operating system, install it, and see what it's like uh, on a physical computer. Now, a special call out to Todd. Todd uh, had donated this to me uh, quite a while ago, actually, and this is a three and a half inch disk version. Uh, runs DOS, Windows, and OS2 applications. So obviously they're trying to be the market leader and saying, hey, we can run anything we want uh, into your system. So let's look at the system requirements, which we more than enough meet here. So we have the Intel 386 SX. We have four megabyte of memory. IBM recommends six megabytes though, so you better uh, beef up your system. Uh, one, one and a half or 1.44, uh, three and a half inch drive uh, with a hard disk of 20 to 40 megabytes of space, which we more than have today. A mouse or compatible pointing device. And this is the standard edition because they did have other versions of this uh, amongst other things. And on the back here, it just gives you your overview and your outlay of the actual operating system. So as to make your PC easier to use than ever before. It's the powerful and easy to use PC operating system. Uh, OS2 turns your PC into a useful tool. Most people think and work visually with pictures and so does OS2. So obviously they were competing with Windows 3.1, uh, obviously or Windows 3 or that version era version of Windows. And so OS2 delivers unprecedented power or unprecedented power for your PC. It can run DOS, Windows and thousands of OS2 applications and applications can share information with others. My understanding is developers didn't make a whole pile of software for OS2. It eventually died down as they saw that Microsoft was delivering um, more and more for their um, for their operating system. So definitely something that uh, to keep in mind, at least from what I understand. And with OS2, you have the power to uh, simultaneously print a file, simultaneously, mind you, print a file, format a disk, download data from another computer, crunch numbers on a spreadsheet, and work on a document at the same time. So definitely multitasking is what they were definitely pushing for this versus just one app, uh, one activity at a time. And have captured the OS2 has captured the future and made it available today. So it has um, 
Uh, the technologies in OS2 are Multimedia Presentation Manager uh, 2 version 1.1, 32-bit graphics, uh, PCM CIA version 2, touchscreen enabled, pen computing enabled. So definitely uh, ahead of its time, if that's the case, uh, in terms of 1993. And contains state-of-the-art multimedia support, allows you to enhance your text and graphics-based presentations with sound effects, music, and video playback capabilities. Uh, yeah, so uh, here we are. <laughs> We're going to open the box up. And this has obviously been opened before. Uh, this is something that, uh, again, was uh, he wasn't using it anymore, had no need for it, was going to toss it. And I said, no, don't toss it. Send it my way. So we have the installation guide. And the installation guide, I imagine, just goes through and gives us all the different uh, methods of installing the oper operating system itself. So... Um, diagnosing system problems, just your standard installation disk or installation uh, guide. And uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, uh, you know, just in terms of, I mean, these books hopefully are readily available on the internet, uh, whether it's archive.org or winworld.com or uh, different areas. But uh, if not, please let me know in the comments. I don't mind getting these uploaded to archive.org. And uh, yeah, it just talks about, you know, do you want to keep your existing operating system? So whether you have a version of OS2 standard, a previous version, or extended, and then you have, or if you have DOS, you know, or Microsoft Windows, hey, we're going to replace your Microsoft Windows uh, with OS2 version 2.1. Uh, yeah, so definitely uh, really cool. And it goes on talking about the different, uh, different ways to install the software. And then on top of that, we have the operating system, how to use it. Uh, and remember when you used to get books <laughs> instead of that, you know, read me file or uh, word doc, or now it's an online reference, but yeah, so this just gives you a, how to use the actual, uh, the actual operating system itself. And, you know, the scope of today's video is to install the operating system and, uh, and just see if it works, just get it installed. And, and, you know, I, I've never done this before. I've never installed OS two in my life. So this is definitely a learning experience for me too. And I just thought, Hey, and see what we can do to get installed. Now, one thing I will call out is I do have a 386 computer with four megabytes of RAM, and I do have the required hard disk space, but that was the operating system, or sorry, that was the system that we installed Windows 3.1 on and DOS 6.22. And I have other plans for that system, so I didn't want to have to fight with the floppy disks or anything like that again. So instead, what I did was I ended up getting a system, uh, the AOPEN Mystery PC, and that's the Pentium 133 uh, with 16 megabytes of RAM, I believe it is. And so I swapped the hard drive out with another four gigabyte hard drive that I had, IDE drive, and I was able to get that uh, going. So we're ready to go in that front. So inside OS2, send your for your free issue of inside OS2 today. So not only when you purchase the operating system, you know, they're encouraging you to send this away to get a free book, a magazine. So it just talks about return the card below to get your free inside issue of OS2, the Cobb Group's exclusive how-to publication for OS2 users. Definitely working uh, time-saving tips and techniques about OS2. Shortcuts to improve productivity and problem-solving advice from OS2 experts. Really encouraging people to go towards OS2, and they were even willing to uh, send some stuff your way. There's a read me first. Now, does anyone actually do that? <laughs> anyway, uh, read me first. Before you begin installation OS2 operating system, you might want to read the readme.ins file on diskette 3. Uh, okay, so dig through your disk, find number 3, pop in the system, read that first before installing. Uh, to use the editor to view the file, so it tells you how to do that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and we have kind of a cardboard, uh, well, not cardboard, more like card stock, I should say. Um, so it says OS2 2.1 Quick Reference. This card provides you with the information on installing the OS2 2.1 operating system, starting with the OS2 tutorial and finding the other information you need. It also provides an overview of the objects in the OS2 desktop and instructions for doing everyday tasks, installing the operating system, how to do that, uh, and a whole bunch of other things here, which is really cool to see. So that might come in handy as we're installing it. So on the back here, it just shows you the desktop and then gives you kind of a reference on the left page here to show you exactly and kind of give you an idea what is uh, there in terms of the OS. Uh, what else is in here? We lots of things in here. So we've taken over the power, of, we've taken the power of OS2 database manager. 
So I believe this comes with this. So um, yeah, so a robust client server relationship database platform an open system that works well with others, all this good thing. So obviously database software of some sort uh, comes with this again, minds greater than mine will know what that is in terms of what is um, in here. Uh, then order now to save 50 50 percent off suggested retail price purchase stylos plus for os2 for 195 i love the fact that all this is in the box this would have been original back in 93 um, and then another option or part of the soft well the software is back up your os2 system today so it just gives you all the different uh, um, options so if you bought this it would be just a special to say hey since you purchased this we have a, an agreement that if you uh, fill all this out, you'll get this software for 50% off. So that's pretty good. Uh, make your words unforgettable. Savings from Adobe Systems. Wow, Adobe from 1993. <laughs> uh, my goodness, how Adobe's come a long way. So it gives you Adobe typeset, uh, obviously different character sets and things like that for um, for this. And just gives you a different another, another special uh, that they offer you, another partnership where you can send this away and get uh, get that. And what else do we have here? IBM desktop software. So, oh, it's a software registration card. So this is the actual registration to uh, send this away for to register your version of OS 2. And what else is here? So we have now everyone can mingle with the host. Um, new communications manager 2 for OS 2 is here, a special introductory price. So this must have been their... Um, their version of some sort of communication from networking uh, software and what have you. I wonder if this is uh, similar to uh, what, like Windows for Workrooms, for example. Again, um, keep me honest in the comments. Again, I don't know anything about that. IBM Play Smart Save Big with the OS 2 Solutions Pack. So this way it would have been like a productivity pack that would have been available to the operating system, to anybody who purchased the operating system. Um, so it tells you about all the different things, you know, Altimedia, whatever that is. Find, see, and manage files in a flash. So Norton Commander. I do, I am aware of Norton Commander, uh, but this is for the version OS for, uh, for OS 2. So there's the LAM management utilities that uh, also gives you an option. So LAM problems got you pulling out your hair, out of control, software upgrades, servers down, viruses on the LAN, terrible performance. Why wait? Call IBM. IBM CAD, so CAD design, CAD solutions, which is, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool to, to see. Faxworks OS2. Okay, IBM Fax PM applet. So OS2 fax software have to do with the uh, previous page and how to get that special offer $99. Mission critical code starts here. So CSET++ for OS2. So just, again, some coding software as well. Uh, capture your screen, view your clipboard. So like a snippet type utility as well. Uh, TCP IP internet protocol for OS2, connecting OS2 to your open multi-vendor network with IBM TCP IP. So these are all the applications and different uh, things that would have been available as a solutions pack to purchase through IBM and to help augment the operating system. Okay, so then we come down to the actual software on floppies. No wonder this box was so heavy. So we have several floppies here. Um, the installation diskette, and then we have disks one, and then they all go down and they continue to count down. So now you'll see some disks that are made, even though I have the originals here for the, you know, the installation disk, for example, the startup one, I had to copy a new um, one because the disk went bad during the last uh, footage I had done again that was one of the list of things i had issues with while trying to install the operating system how this was ever released to consumers i have no idea <laughs> because it was quite the challenge for me to even try to get it going now it could be because i was trying to install it on newer hardware i'll be honest with you uh, you know i've i've been on the internet i've done a lot of research and i'm not the only one that has this problem <laughs> installing os2 so i'm going to get the uh turn the power on to this beautiful thinkpad again and I don't know if you've seen my community posts up to this point, but I did take out the uh, battery that we just recently had fixed because one of my viewers had indicated that don't do that. It's a charging battery, the VL2020, which I had taken out of there as a rechargeable battery. And so I had taken the, the, um, uh, the multimeter and specifically uh, found out that sure enough, 
they were right. And it was giving four to four and a half volts charging power back through that port. So I said, well, let's remove it. And I have ordered one since. Not to say that my method wouldn't have worked. Uh, it works just fine if I had the right battery. I'm going to remove diskette from A and insert operating system diskette one into the drive. Already, it seems to be going better than on the Pentium, believe it or not. So here we are, we get to go through this. I get to go through this again for another however long it takes to uh, film the footage and do the edits and all those good things. But for you guys, um, you'll get to see the installation of the operating system. And our goal today is just to get this installed. Um, I'm not looking at doing a lot of configuration. I just want to get the operating system installed and stable. That's my goal for today. Um, in terms of like hardware drivers and things like that, I, I doubt very much this will have the appropriate drivers required. So I'd have to go on the hunt for those. Nothing I was doing was working to get the system installed. It just would give me generic errors. And what's funny is the errors that it would give me were different almost every time. And I didn't, like sometimes I didn't change a variable and I would restart and I would get a different error than I had before and be at a different point in the installation, which I just couldn't understand why. Anyway, so welcome to OS2. The following screens will guide you through the installation of the operating system on uh, OS2 on, well, the operating system 2 uh, program on hard disk. Please enter to begin the installation. Refer to the installation guide for assistance if you're installing multiple systems. We are not. This version of PS2 operating system supports Windows 3.1 programs. If you're upgrading your system from OS2 version 2, this enhanced support for Windows 3.1 programs replaces the previous level of support. If you're installing over a previous or an existing OS2 2 system, which we're not, um, existing features can no longer be used, etc. So it just tells you to refer to the guide. So during the first part of the installation, you'll get choices to make a choice. It just tells you how to navigate the installation screen. So we'll hit next on that. Enter, I should say. So we're just going to accept the drive. And now it's asking me for disk number two. So that already is a good sign. And so I got through the installation disk. I got through disk one and I got through disk two. But again, I had some problems. So we're going to format the partition and we're going to do a, a FAT file system. And it might contain data. That's fine. I don't care about that. And we'll continue on. Okay, the formatting is now complete. And now it's loading system files. Please wait. And now it's transferring files from diskette number two. Okay, remove the diskette from drive A. No problem, computer. I can do that for you anytime you want. And now it's asking for diskette number three. And so far, I did get this far. For the record, for the other system, um, I uh, got to disk number five, where it asked me to put back in disk number two, I believe, or one. And then that's when everything kind of went south. And we'll pop in number four. So far, so good. I won't jinx it. Just keep on putting disks in as it requests. Okay, disk number four is complete, asking for disk number five. Now... I believe I got this far before. I believe I got as far as when it tells you to restart. And then the restart itself just would not work. I'm hoping that the IBM logos can talk to each other and say, hey, I'm meant for you. Install me on this system. You're more than welcome to make a home inside this beautiful ThinkPad from 1994. Okay, so disk number five is complete. Now this is where it asks you to put back in the installation disk. So now it's saying the hard disk preparation is complete. The next step will be OS2 system configuration. Remove the diskette from the diskette drive. Done. Here it is. Please enter the key to start the OS2 system configuration. All right. It looks good. I'm going to hit enter. This is where it would not work for me. There was no way I can get with, or the computer to detect the partition or look for to boot from that area. I don't know why. Uh, we'll see if it does anything different this time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> look at that. We have OS2 loading. Please wait. No disks in the drive. I got goosebumps here, everybody. I cannot even tell you how happy I am. I know we're not done yet, but the fact that we have this on the screen and a moving cursor, I'm excited. This is amazing. I literally tried to do this for almost 10 hours on that other system, swapping hard drives, swapping RAM, swapping partitions, 
doing everything I can, fixing discs as I went through that process with uh, ISO dumps, and bam, it, we have an IBM laptop from 1994 installing it. And I mean, heck, you know, is that because it needs to be like hardware that it needs? I, I don't know. Anyway, we're not done yet, but I just got really excited um, and uh, go from there. So I'm going to click on install all features because we want it all. Uh, use the mouse or the space bar to place a check mark in the box next to each option you would like to change and then hit OK. So the mouse, no, we're not going to change the mouse. Serial device support installs support for sure. Primary display is super uh, video graphics array is what it's detecting. We'll say yes to that. I will change that in the future once I get different drivers. Our countries, United States, uh, we're in Canada, that's fine. I'm going to try installing this EROM. Uh, you know, the external um, PCM CIA when it comes time after I get the operating system installed. We're not going to add any layers of complexity to this. SCSI adapter support, we don't need that. And then default printer, um, sure. I, I mean, we have nothing installed right now, but that's cool. We'll hit OK. And it says here, select the printer. So I'm going to select the Epson FX if it's here. Uh, 1050, look at that. It's pre-installed as part of the operating system. That's great because if you remember, I did another video on the Epson FX 1050 printer, so I do have that. And by the way, it works just fine. So I'm going to hit OK on that. OS2 setup installation. You are about to begin the installation of your selected configuration. Sure. OK. Oh, everybody, this is so cool. OK, now it's asking for disk six. That is absolutely amazing. Now, I may run into problems right now, uh, and I'm not trying to jinx myself. I'm just saying that I may, I haven't gotten past five. Um, so if any of these other disks don't work, then I'll have to uh, run to my other system and do a, uh, just rebuild another floppy. Hit OK, and hope to heck it works just fine. Oh, everyone, this is just exciting. I'm just so happy to see this. More happy because uh, the fact that... <laughs> Oh, just because of the fact that uh, we literally, uh, I literally spent 10 hours. I'm so disappointed when I made that post, uh, that community post, but I wanted everyone to know that I was in the middle of trying to do that video for the Wednesday or the Saturday release. I forget when I had done that. And, you know, after putting so much time into that video and just not getting anywhere with it over two days, I just gave up and then had to regroup and I ended up doing the IBM via voice. Um, uh, video instead. Transfer files to your hard disk. Please wait. So it's currently going through all the different files. And I love that little bar where it stop, starts to populate the graphics here. Hey, look at that. That was quick. Number seven. We'll pop that disk in there. And, you know, the fact that we're also using a 30-year-old, or close to it, uh, floppy disk drive. Uh, but IBM's equipment, I just love their hardware and just so reliable, so robust. Uh, but I love the little discs here as well. It tells you which one you're on. So, I mean, 17 discs, hoping that our installation goes knock on wood smoothly as we go. Okay, here we are. <clears throat> Use the mouse or the space bar to place a check mark in the box next to each action you would like to perform. Install device support diskette, migrate applications, configure WinOS to desktop. So far, so good. Our little trusty hard drive is clicking away there. Again, so happy that each one of those floppy disks were, um, were good to go. Okay, OS2 setup, installation is complete. Remove the disk from A and press enter to restart the system. Fingers crossed that this works. Oh, come on, OS2. We have the splash screen, operating system 2 version 3, 2.1, loading, please wait. Copyright 1993. OK, 
Okay, welcome to the OS2 tutorial. If you're unfamiliar with OS2 2.1, it is recommended that you view the entire tutorial. We'll hit next to continue and it tells you how to use the mouse, how to use the keys to go back and forth. Uh, tutorial describes how you work with the objects, small pictures on your screen. Uh, some are folders which contain other objects. So objects are icons or files. This, your screen is called your desktop picture to the right which is a folder in itself. Okay, and click on next. And to continue the tutorial, so select a topic on the right by double clicking on it with your mouse or tap a topic and use enter. So your mouse using objects, using window parts, getting help in OS2 system overview. You know what, let's be adventurous, hit exit and see what we have. So this is the desktop. So I can right click on here, uh, which is really cool. And yeah, so start here. What does start here mean? Let's double click that. Um, oh, so this is all the, okay. So it just gives you all the, uh, this is like a help file, I would assume. Um, but yeah, OS2 is installed. It will go close. Restart the computer because I'd like to Try to see what it will do to install that CD-ROM drive. Okay, so I hit the shutdown button and it says, now save to your computer or restart the system by pressing control delete. I'm just gonna go and shut off the power to the computer. And we're gonna put in that IBM card, PCM card, because I wanna see if it detects that as hardware or I'm gonna have to try to find drivers for it as well. It'd be pretty cool to get CD-ROM support through this process. Okay, I'm gonna flick on the switch again. Now I just zoomed in here a little bit so everybody can have a different view of what's going on here. Now, let's see, under system setup, I wonder if there's a way, if this is like the control panel probably. And here we go, this is the original screen. So we'll click on CD-ROM device support. Okay, we're gonna click on PCM CIA support and hit install. Yeah, it's gonna need a driver disk for that card, I think. Oh, okay, maybe not. Install operating system two, diskette three into drive A. So OS two, diskette three. Okay, it says complete. So we'll go ahead and hit okay, because it wants me to restart the system. So go system shut down. Are you sure you want to close? Yes. Okay, I'm just going to do a control delete. Okay, so we're back and I installed the PCM, or sorry, installed the power adapter for the PCM CIA external drive. And I'm not detecting it here um, after I installed it now. Obviously there's a lot more I need to learn about this to be able to get this installed. Specifically, you know, do I have to tell it it's an IBM CD-ROM drive and still go through that driver installation process, et cetera. I'm gonna save that for a future state and uh, just continue on with the operating system install and continuing. And again, for our scope of our, our work here, we were going to just install the OS, but I just can't stop. So I'm gonna install the IBM Multimedia Presentation Manager 2 because it's here. It's part of the uh, software package that came with it and I have no idea what it is used for. So it's gonna be fun. So we'll install that here. And it's cool to see Shredder here. I imagine that's the uh, the recycle bin, <laughs> so to speak. So let's go under drives under A and it's reading the disc. I imagine it's gonna bring up some kind of file explorer. Sure enough, there it is. And it tells me to run this uh, file right here. IBM Multimedia Presentation Manager 2. Okay, welcome to Multimedia Installation. Select the software features from the following list that match your hardware configuration. Software motion video requires no special hardware to show movies. <laughs> movies? Hit OK. And let's see here. Um, tells you where to install. Path, target drive is C, lots of space. Yes, the config says file must be changed. You want to make sure to configure the following changes. Yes. Uh, it'll be a copy of the, okay, so it just says there'll be a copy there as well. Do you want installation program? Yes, to change it. Here we are. I just love this uh, OS2 installation, just giving you how many disks there are in the overall status. 
that was something really cool um, in there. And it tells you what discs are on as well, which is neat. I mean, I know that the operating system when installed Windows 3.1 is similar to that, uh, outside of just showing the uh, disc to show a styles bar, but quite boring. But I'm loving this so far. Um, definitely cool learning another operating system. As old as it is, uh, again, never had OS 2 before. So this is just something uh, as an experience for me. Okay, so it's prompting me and asking me to install the sound card. So hoping that this is uh, correct. Okay, so I installed a couple of icons, volume control and multimedia. That's a good sign. It's asking me to restart. So it told me to shut down and restart. And we'll hit OK. And we'll be right back with the new the desktop again with uh, that installed. So shut down is completed. It's now safe to turn off your computer. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, we're back after the sound installation, and I don't think I have sound. <laughs> um, it seemed to go well, but it's grayed out the sound, movies, and sound bites. And yet, when I click on the you know file, for example, and you know try to play something here, uh, it all works. But then I hit play, and it says the desired action not supported by the current device, or the desired hardware is defective. But I am getting system beeps through the speakers. Um, I hooked up my external speakers and I'm getting um, system like it here. I'll do it again. You'll hear the beep near the air. So it is something to do with uh, the setup here. So again, going slightly beyond the scope of what we're trying to accomplish today, but the fact that we have that installed and we're getting closer and closer as we go. Now, let's just take a look at the operating system itself, just uh, in general. I mean, we have the Epson FX 1050 printer there, and these are all, you know, icons for the desktop and um, productivity, games, command prompts, uh, system setup, startup, and drives. We were already in there a little bit. Under information, we have Rex information, command reference, tutorial, and glossary, just to uh, get you through the operating system and other helpful things. Plus, there's a master help index here. Uh, minimized window viewer. Um, start here, which is just, you know, general overview of the system. Multimedia, which we just installed. So it's nice that it comes with the multimedia options. So there's a readme file, which I can, of course, spend some time doing. Digital video, MIDI 3, 2, and 1, and then digital audio 3, 2, and 1. I imagine it's doing that because I told it to select the three different installation drivers. And, you know, let's just try all three here just to see. Yeah, so all three, because I inst told it to install three drivers, and that's probably what's confusing things here. So I'll have to go back and uninstall those three and then just make sure we line up exactly what um, we need to do and play with some of the setup and all that to get that going. What's under productivity? Um, so this is basically the operating system. So we have a to-do list, OS System 2 editor, picture viewer. Um, what do we have in our picture viewer? Any pictures, any sample pictures? Uh, no, it just tells you to go and select one that you want to um, pick from. So we're not going to do that right now. But uh, yeah, it's pretty cool to have that on there. Clipboard viewer, database. So database is just a spreadsheet type. Uh, no, spreadsheet is down there. This is database, obviously. Um, spreadsheet is down here. Oh, that's really cool to have the OS 2 uh, based uh, Excel <laughs> of the day. Uh, sticky pads. Now that's something that, you know, just is really, really handy to have uh, installed. And, uh, you know, that's, I don't think that was something that Windows 3.1 had. Uh, at least I don't remember. Tune editor, to do list archive, monthly planner, activities list, daily planner, planner archive. So you can store all your stuff. I mean, heck, I need this today. <laughs> Uh, let's see what else is on here. We have calendar, we have alarms, notepad, calculator, and oh yeah, there we go. Good old OS2 uh, calculator. Does it do minus? It does. Minus two. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool to have that. And PM chart. Let's click on that. And what do we have under PM chart? Uh, is this like mapping? Yeah, okay. It's like Microsoft Works almost. Um, okay, yeah. So you do that and it would chart out your... Um, it will graph out your data. Yeah, so similar to Microsoft Works on that uh, that ability or taking Excel and converting it over. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, let's get out of that. And yeah, that's under productivity. Let's close that and go into games. So we have OS2 Chess. Let's open that up real quick. Um, white side's human. Black side, we'll do computer. And we won't have names. Will it let me go? Yeah, it will. Okay. 
So, well, that's pretty, uh, pretty rudimentary, <laughs> but it works. Um, I'm already failing. That's okay, though. Uh, let's go here. It'd be nice if it had sound. Uh, does it give, yeah, so it gives you the option for sound. Jigsaw. Uh, what is this? Does it give me an option to open? Sure. I don't know what this does. <laughs> I just, I mean, to me, this would be a, uh, like, um, a puzzle game, but, uh, okay. What's cat and mouse? Cat setup, control panel, playtime, speed. Uh, oh my goodness. What's going on here? Is that, did I just see something run behind the... <laughs> Look at the mouse. Or the, uh, the cat. Jeez, the mouse. Come on, chase my mouse. Come on. Come on. Come get it. Oh, it's trying to get me. Come on. Oh, why is this so entertaining? Oh, it got me. <laughs> okay, you know what? This is way too entertaining for what it is. Definitely, uh, when I'm done this video, I'm going to have to spend some more time playing that. Scramble. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. So this is just, uh, one of those, yeah, scramble. So you either line up one through, uh, 15 I'm using the space here to move the cards around to get, you know, one where it needs to go. I used to play this quite a bit as a kid, but I would have used the, um, I would have used the, the handheld version of this. I never had an electronic version of this. So really cool to, uh, to see that in motion. What else is here? We have Reversi. I mean, that's something that copied through to Windows 3.1, I believe. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this is, uh, that's really neat uh, to have these installed as part of the OS. And then Solitaire Klondike. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. So this is something that uh, would have included in the uh, Microsoft Entertainment Packs uh, was the Klondike Solitaire, just standard Solitaire was something that came with, um, came with operating system for Windows 3.1. I'm just wondering if it gives the option to go to anything other than um, Klondike. No, I don't see that. But yeah, that's uh, this is pretty uh, pretty cool. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's uh, get another card here. And I can't remember how to play this. <laughs> Dude. So this is the uh, this is OS two. Okay, so we have OS two installed. That was our goal today. I wanted to finally get to a point where we felt good about the operating system install on this machine. And, you know, just having the operating system installed, period, after going through all of these disks over here, uh, definitely uh, an accomplishment on, on this end. I'm very pleased with having this. Yes, I don't have sound. Yes, the PCM CIA card needs some assistance there. But again, I, I wasn't prepared. I don't have drivers. And that wasn't the scope of what we were trying to do. We were trying to overcome... What I had gone through over 10 hours before in a different system, different hardware, we were able to get it installed on this beautiful IBM machine. So I think in a future video, what we'll do is we'll get the sound installed, get that all fixed up. We'll get the uh, CD-ROM working as well, see if we can get that support going. Obviously, the operating system says CD-ROM support. So I imagine it's like Windows 3.1 where I have to go and get the drivers on floppy, get them over, install the driver, it installs the drivers, and then I can go back and pick from, choose the drivers to install um, that specific card and that specific um, CD-ROM drive. Same thing with the sound card that's in this. I mean, I know that this is a CS4248 audio uh, that's installed in this. So I just have to go get those drivers for this. I imagine if I do that um, and install that and reverse the work I did to install the three drivers for the sound blaster, I just kind of took a shot in the dark hoping the one would work. Um, so I'll go in and uh, fix all that up and all those good things. So I think if we do that, we'll be in a better shape for another video and get that as an update video to this. So this has already been long enough because it's been a complete operating system install, but it's a success. We have <laughs> we have this installed, and uh, you know I don't know about you guys, but uh, I want to uh, I definitely want to play around with the uh, mouse a little bit here. I think he uh, you know I think he just wants to get out and hang out on the operating system for a little while. So if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. Helps me make new content. And uh, hit the notification button above and select it to all so you're notified when I make new content, uh, no matter what uh, it is, a community post, a comment, or a uh, notification of a new video. 
And uh, again, comment down below, please, if you think I'm on the right track in terms of sound card and or PCM card, uh, PCM CIA card, please let me know in the comments below. And always comment. I do everything I can to reply to everybody's comments down below. I love the interaction on the channel. Uh, we will see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.